Last week I told you guys I was going to be doing a pen in Fusion 360 and oh my goodness, it was an absolute nightmare. However, I did get it finished and I'm super proud of myself. I have it in the back here on my screen, but I'll insert a little clip of the, the parts of the pen that I did and as well as the blueprint that I copied from. And um, let me know what you guys think. It did take the whole day just because I ran into a few problems that I had trouble solving. But with research and help from my friends and I managed to figure it out. I tried the Keyshot free trial and that is a rendering and texturing software and it is absolutely amazing. However, it's so expensive so I don't think that's the route I'm going to go towards. However, this is what I used in this project and yeah, you guys can check it out. I additionally have been trying to learn perspective and drawing and it is an absolute nightmare for me as well. I feel like all the things that are challenging is exactly what I need to keep working on just because it's so rewarding when you actually figure it out. I have been looking through this book and it is called How to Draw. It is not an easy read at all. Like this is not something you can read thoroughly. You need to stop, look at the page, read the page, digest the page, and attempt the, the actual art piece or the drawing style. And it's, a, it's definitely tricky, but I think when you learn how to draw in perspective and learn the craft, it is so fulfilling and you just feeling that, um, that you can't really describe. You just feel so good and that you feel accomplished. Right now, I absolutely suck. I can say that wholeheartedly, that I am so bad at drawing, especially real anything realistic. Abstract, oh no, I got this. But when it comes to photorealism or perspective drawing, I just, I freeze up and yeah, it's absolutely terrible. This is one attempt to try to learn and I was said I was recommended that I just keep drawing circles and and squares in um, one, two, three point perspectives and just practice continuously and eventually it just becomes second nature to you. But yeah, still struggling. This was another attempt to get some sort of dimension and add a little shading, but it just looks so bad. I hope 2022 I am consistent with perspective drawing and so that I'm able to make professional blueprints and stuff like that for my 3D models. This was an attempt to follow a blueprint for a little loveseat or a, a little couch and um, yeah, once again, very, very poorly done. But I'm setting a goal for myself by the end of next year, in one year, I will be able to draw successfully in two, one, two, and three point perspective. Yeah, that's my goal. And my massive couch here, I was also trying. Anyways, I'm not gonna embarrass myself anymore. <laughs> that's enough updates for today, and now on to the hydro dipping. I hope you guys enjoy. Hey guys, so it's been a few days since I hydro dipped the combs, and they're looking okay, I guess. This was my first attempt at hydro dipping and although I got the resin molds down pat, I have a long way to go when it comes to hydro dipping. First of all, I find that the black spray paint probably was not the best way to go. It really dampens the combs look and it didn't really blend well with the metallic silver and I'll show you now. So this is the outcome. I was expecting more of a very, I don't know, a very bold design that was very interesting and something that you've never seen before. And the outcome for this was was not, not the best. Uh, first of all, I realized that I do need a base coat for this. Um, I thought that a top coat would be sufficient for the hydro dipping when that's not the case. I definitely need to prime the comb first before I hydro dip it just so um, it doesn't chip when it dries and I found that was happening with this. Let's see if you can see. 
the the paint started to kind of rub off and it's just not looking too good it i had an image in my head and and this was definitely not it but like i still have a lot of spray paint left i'm going to go get the primer soon so that i can actually kind of fulfill the image that i have in my head primarily i wanted to do gold i, d I didn't want to do black i thought black would be the best way to go but now I'm thinking that's probably not the best color choice just because it does not mesh well with the metallics I'm really kind of curious to see how gold will turn out um, and white but for now I don't want to keep spending on um, spray paint and just to have it not come out to my full expectations so i'm gonna keep practicing with what i have and eventually i will add more to the collection i also wanted to see how it would turn out when i hydro dip the actual 3d print and same deal it stuck to every little fiber it didn't cover the entire comb and it just it, it just looks bad that's all I can say. I was so excited to do this and this is what I get. Again, I have to do a little bit more research, kind of practice a few more times on different models. I'm not going to give up on this one because I feel like I have such a strong idea when it comes to prototyping 3D models, printing them, and then actually creating a, um, a final product that looks like a realistic item that you could see in stores or find day to day around your house. I did over the last week kind of play around with a few more designs because yeah this is a cool standard you know comb shape. I wanted to do a few different variations that are um, that are good for different hair types and um, appeal to a broader audience. And so the three different styles that I did was the first one, probably one of my favorites. It's very long bristles for curly hair. And although it is, I still really love how um, it works. It is so thin and it just glides through your hair, um, but it's thick enough so that it, it won't break or snap on you. Like the bristles are, are pretty sturdy, which I'm very happy about. And the print just, Let's see, the print came out very seamless. So to be honest, I think I'm gonna be adding this to my collection. The next comb I did was just like your standard uh, comb with a bunch of bristles at the top. And this one is good too, I definitely like it. It has, um, has more of a grip and it's sturdier on the top here so you can really get the tangles out. And my third design here is this really special comb and uh, these ones are for I guess like trying to get like a middle part or part your hair in a certain way. So I found that these worked so cool. I rounded the edges when I was designing so they're not like stabbing you in the head but they're good enough to actually catch the hair and like make your part or part your hair however you want. It's also like a finer comb for, I don't know, whatever you want to use it for. We're happy with the results for um, these two in particular. I did have a reference photo when I was working with this just because I wanted to get an idea of what is needed out there and what people like and want. And I thought this was a great start as well as the other two that I made. I'm pretty sure I mentioned last week, but I created all the combs on Fusion 360 and, and it is an amazing program. It is super user friendly, but it does have a lot of different learning curves. But once you get over the hump, it is smooth sailing from there. After I created the comb design, I decided to kind of test out my blueprint making skills and it was at a negative 10 but I feel like I'm getting very comfortable with it now and I feel like I need to create it for every model just because it is a reference it is a point where you can look at the blueprint and you can recreate it or when you're sending a product product off to be manufactured they have a reference they know exactly what you want and no questions asked. This is the blueprint that I created from this model. Um, all the accurate measurements and um, 
dimensions are there for a reference which include each curve the radius of the curve the length of the handle and the length of the the bristles literally every detail is on there and it was interesting learning it just because it's so useful for the manufacturing production i guess cycle and just to have as your own reference so i thought that was really cool i don't know what you guys think but i am happy this is coming along next week i'm really gonna focus on making christmas decorations because this year my christmas tree is going to be filled with 3d prints and yeah i'll have some lights because you need a, you need a little light in your life but um i'm going to print all the decorations and ornaments and everything even the star on the top i'm gonna try to uh make that out of epoxy resin or whatever I can find. <laughs> I'm gonna do a mix of designs I find on Thingiverse or other online websites and I'm going to create a few myself. And yeah, it's gonna be so much fun. I can't wait to show you guys. Christmas is around the corner, so I think it'll be a great little thing that I can do and show you guys. Other than that, I hope you guys have a wonderful week and weekend and I'll see you next week with a new video. Bye.